I personally find the Tremaine Edmonds uh, whole situation to be a very fascinating one and one that I think deserves a deep dive. Uh, I think Edmonds is a really good player. I think one you know reason why I've disagreed with some people with my take on this is I think Edmonds is incredibly underrated and think he's a very good player. Uh, and you know I, I talked about uh, I, I tweeted out and some people got some controversy, which is always uh, entertaining. Uh, I talked about how I kind of like this move because it feels like. They're getting, you know, they got rid of Roquan Smith, got draft capital back from that trade, and now we're playing a paying a better player less money uh, at the same position. Feels like it's just good business by the, uh, you know, by the Chicago Bears here. Now, some people raise some eyebrows about better player. Uh, I don't know about that. And, you know, people bringing up Roquan Smith uh, and how well he did with the Ravens, although I would kind of push back saying I think part of why he did so well with the Ravens was because of how they used him. They let him kind of uh, utilize him in more of a, you know, kind of just go out there and be a playmaker type style, which more suits his uh, his skill set, whereas I think Edmonds is much more of a high batting average guy. He's the guy who's in position, the guy who does the little things very well, which we will get into once we get into the film, and that's kind of why I personally like the Edmonds style of linebacker more than the Roquan Smith style of linebacker more. Now, you can disagree with that. That's fine. It is, at the end of the day, a play style difference more than anything, but I think one thing that I would find very, uh, one thing that I think is also interesting to me in this situation uh, when it comes to Tremaine Edmonds is I just think he fits the bear scheme better. I just think that he it's a better fit and he's getting less money on top of it. So uh, when you add those two things, and again, they didn't trade Tremaine Edmonds for Roquan Smith, right? Uh, it was two separate moves. They traded Roquan Smith and then paid Edmonds. But I think you can look at it all together and say, if you know, you're the Bears, would you trade uh, Roquan Smith for Tremaine Edmonds, a second and a fifth round pick, and you're paying Edmonds less money. For me, I would. I can see why some people wouldn't, but I feel like the people that wouldn't also wouldn't run the scheme that the Chicago Bears run. So again, I can talk about this in more detail about the Roquan Smith and everything, but let's let's stop with that now. Let's just talk about Tremaine Edmonds and what he does well and why I'm so high on him as a player. So first, let's start here, where you see Pro Football Focus on the top left-hand corner of the screen had Edmonds as the uh, 17th most valuable free agent in this class. Uh, you look over towards his numbers towards the right. Uh, they were not a huge fan of him in 2020 and 2021. Uh, he was the 74th rated linebacker in 2020 and then the 60th rated linebacker in 2021, but they loved his 2022 season uh, as he, in 100 and, and excuse me, in 905 snaps, had an over 80 grade. That was the fifth best linebacker in football and a, a solid PFF war, although maybe not as good as you might have thought given his high PFF grade of just 0.17. But still, he is an above-average player, certainly. And, uh, you know, you could debate a fantastic player, uh, or you could say maybe he had a career year and a contract year. What do you want to say? Well, we'll get into the tape and talk about it. Uh, they s said that the projected contract would be $18.75 million a year. Well, let's get into the film. Let's talk about what he does well, because I think he's very good. I really do. I think he's a really good linebacker and adds a ton of value. And here's a good example of what he can do, where it's a zone coverage play. He is covering the middle of the field right here. That's his job. That's his zone. It's the one that I uh, circled in white. That's where he's going to be covering. And you see how this play could create some issues, uh, right? Where for Minnesota, they have two receivers who are, you know, one is Justin Jefferson, who's running sort of a deeper route. That's going to get some extra attention. You then have your tight end kind of go under Underneath. Hopefully he can get open. Watch how one this play begins. Cousins takes a snap and he's going to look over. And again, there's a window. You can see why Cousins wants to make this throw. It's going to come down to how well can Edmonds read this play and break on this play. And he's, you know, if you look at him right now, you can tell he's in good position. He's reading uh, Cousins and he's ready to break in. So when he does, he nearly gets the interception on that play. And this is the kind of thing that Edmonds is capable of. He's capable of making good reads and, uh, you know, shutting stuff down when it appears to be looking good. Also stuff like this, where he can play man coverage pretty well as well, where that's what's going to happen on this play. It's a two safety deep coverage, uh, cover two man. So you see the route on the screen. That is the route that Edmonds will be covering. Watch how one this play begins. You see the Edmonds. I mean, you know, at this point, 
it's a bit of a concern, right? You are you can't look at the quarterback right here. You're playing man, so you have to play the receiver. But with the receiver now going a little bit further behind, this is a scary situation as if Cousins makes the throw and Edmonds doesn't guess right on when it is coming, well, then it could be just an easy completion. However, watch Edmonds get his head turned around at the perfect time and then drops the football, which is unfortunate. But still, you're getting yourself in position to make interceptions. And when you get put yourself in position consistently enough, eventually you will start to get the interception. Exceptions. At least that's the hope. But it's a really good play to be able to uh, know when to turn around and turn your head because he had safety help. So had he turned his head around and guessed wrong and Cousins still had the football on that play, it would not have been a disaster necessarily because you have a safety who could then just pick up the receiver you're covering. So it's worth the risk and it nearly really paid out. Also going over here, got to talk about his run defense for a second. He can definitely stop the run as well. He's not just a coverage linebacker. He can do both. And this is a good example where the way this play is going to work is that you see where Edmonds is on the screen. It looks like there's a double team and a double team is supposed to eventually, uh, you know, someone get out, gets off the double team and block him, but they never have time because watch what happens. Watch how when this play begins, you see, I mean, that there was a running lane, but Edmonds just completely clogged it up. He read the play quickly and got in position to where what could have been a pretty nice running lane is just now not there. Not just that, when the running back bounces to the outside, watch as Edmonds just stays with it and is able to still make the tackle. That's a really good play from Tremaine Edmonds, and these are the kind of things that he is capable of doing and capable of doing consistently, and that's what you have to like about him is, again, it's a consistency thing. It's not just that he's capable of making good plays. It's that he's capable of making good plays relatively consistently. Like, this one's going to be another one where what's going to happen here is it's just going to be a quick wide receiver screen pass to the bottom of the screen, but... What's notable is that Edmonds is the closest unblocked player here. So if he doesn't get over there quickly enough or takes a bad angle, sometimes these result in touchdowns. So you have to be careful. But as you see, Edmonds is going to, the second he reads what's going on, he does get over there quick enough to be able to help make the tackle. It was well defended by Buffalo altogether. Uh, he wasn't the only guy who made that play, but he still did make a good play. And that's what you like to see. So again, he's someone who is consistently in position to make plays, can make a splash play if needed, but for the most part, his value is in not making the mistakes. He does. He's rarely out of position. He's rarely, uh, you know, falling down or missing his uh, gap assignment in the run defense game. He's a very consistent linebacker who's going to pretty much give you a lot of good snaps. That's kind of the way that I view him, but that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.